Ponyville had been silent for a few weeks since Fluttershy's death, for there had been no other discoveries of murdered ponies. However, there was a panic that spread through the town in whispers, as if the words were wind currents winding their way between buildings. Two fillies had mysteriously disappeared. Sweetie Belle and Scootaloo hadn't been seen for about six days, not since the pair had been hanging out with a third filly at Sweetie Belle's home. Bab Seed had been questioned for hours, as she had been the last one to have seen them. It had been Hypernova that conducted the interrogation at the police station. They kept saying, let's go see Sakura in the Everfree Forest. We'll be safe there. Bab sobbed to the mare, who looked sympathetic. I told them no. I tried to hold them back. I, I even went after them till I got too scared <laughs> to be out in the open any longer. And I ran home. Hypernova asked Babs the same questions repeatedly, as was protocol, but the poor filly always gave the same answers. She even ran out of tears and just laid her head on the table, sulking in her recollection. Of course, any pony who had been the one who last saw another before they disappeared had to be investigated. But Babs had an alibi. Big Macintosh, tired and sickly, vouched for Babs' story saying she came home crying, but didn't speak to him. Just locked herself in Apple Bloom's old bedroom and hid. He could hear her crying periodically, but she didn't come out until the next morning to eat breakfast. Bab Seed was no longer a possible suspect, and the police concluded that the two missing fillies had been snatched when they were on their way to the forest by the bakers. Laughing at the idiocy of the law enforcement, Babs told the other bakers exactly how she pulled it off. After bringing Sweetie Bell and Scootaloo to the castle, she ran home and locked herself in the room, sobbing just as Big Mac had said. She stayed there for about 20 minutes before she set a tape recorder under the blanket with a mound of clothes. This would make it appear as if she was curled up under the blankets, and the recorder was set to repeat every so often playing her sobs that she had recorded a few days before going to Sweetie Belle's house. Then, she snuck out the window, slipping back into the forest. You know how they say evil geniuses are always two steps ahead of the law? Babs asked her friends, who were astonished by her story. Well, I'm always ten steps ahead. I knew I'd be the first one they questioned. I've said it once, and I'll say it again. But with more finesse, said Inky Pie with the widest grin on her face. You're a fucking genius, Babs. Derby had flinched at the curse, but was too happy to care much. It was the middle of the seventh day that the Phillies had been missing, and the search party composed of ten officers met in front of Town Hall. Chief Cherrywood stood exactly where Fluttershy's head had been sitting on the table many weeks ago. What are your reports? He asked his team loudly. Sonic, Hypernova, and I searched the forest the best we could, started Poison Oak. The place is huge and dark, sir, but we did find some old ruins of a castle. We immediately searched it, thinking the bakers may be hiding in there, but we didn't find any sign of life other than a few bugs, mice, and lizards. There is no evidence of any pony in the Everfree Forest at all. Not even the zebra. Zakora's hut is empty. Cherrywood grimaced, and then turned his attention to another set of three officers, nodding for them to speak. Shake your hot shot and I searched the caves up north, but there were no ponies there either, said a unicorn named Feedback. There were signs of some pony being up there recently. Graffiti of cupcakes, bloodstains, and some strands of hair that matches a few of the bakers, but we're not sure when they were up there, or how long ago it was. Next, Cherrywood faced a pair of Earth Stallions, who were twins. Solar Eclipse and I searched the northern parts of Ponyville as directed, sir, said Lunar Eclipse. We looked in every building, including houses that were still occupied. Every pony cooperated when we explained the situation. But still, no sign of the bakers or the missing fillies. Cherrywood let out a heavy sigh, looking exhausted. Early Bird and I combed the southern parts of Ponyville, he told them gesturing to an earth mare standing directly in front of him. We did the same. Went through buildings, entered residences to search, and we even gave Sugar Cube Corner a good look for the umpteenth time. Nothing. Not even the royal guards from Canterlot that the princesses sent here have seen anything suspicious. 
Celestia, it's like they're a ghost or something, muttered Hotshot. Alright, the next step we have to take is daily patrol. Cherrywood continued. The guards are stationed at precise points in town, but we as a team need to circle Ponyville. Five of us will take the day shift, five on night. That way, we'll- The chief continued to speak, but his words gradually faded from the officers' ears as they were distracted. Right above Cherrywood, something white was barely peeking out from under the banister. Their curious eyes soon showed fear as they all realized the thing had fur on it. Sir! Shouted Stryker, flying into the air and pointing right above the chief's head. Cherrywood looked up, and he too wore an expression of terror. He quickly used his magic to pry the three objects from the wood they had been stapled to, and carefully lowered them onto the dying grass in front of his colleagues. The mares began to cry heavily, and Lunar Eclipse actually threw up. Three skinned and partially decomposed hides laid in front of them, one of a zebra and two much smaller hides, one orange and one white. The zebra appeared to be in a more advanced stage of decomposition, but every pony could tell who the skins belonged to. Zakora was the only zebra in Ponyville, and the other two belonged to the missing fillies. They were all stripped of their manes and tails, and Skidaloo's skin had been relieved of its wings. Just as Cherrywood was about to bark an order to the officers, the town hall building behind him exploded and every pony screamed. Dropping to the ground for cover, Doors burst open as the rest of the citizens who had heard the blast came out to see what had caused it, but they had not been prepared for the sight that graced them. It was almost like a work of art. The wreckage laid behind the chief, piles of wood destroyed objects, shattered glass, and many nails, much more than the building had needed when it was built. The officers, some who had been injured, stared at their chief, who was standing up straight on his back legs, frozen in the act of preparing to guard himself from the explosion. Cherrywood's neck had been bent back too far, his eyes and mouth open wide, and he was covered in blood from the countless nails and shards of glass that were piercing his body. The silence was deafening, time had stopped, and no pony moved. Then, as if in slow motion, the unicorn's body tipped sideways and fell to the ground. At last, there were shrieks as panic shot into the air like a cloud of startled fireflies. And all of the police officers surrounding Cherrywood's body, some having to crawl because of how severe they were hurt. Hypernova sobbed over him, for she had worked under him the longest, and Sonic Bullet hit the ground violently, shouting every swear he knew. Apparently, the attack wasn't over. A shower of arrows rained over the officers, each of them getting hit many times. Hypernova slumped over Cherrywood's corpse, three arrows sticking out the back of her head. Sonic had been hit in the flank and ribs, and he looked around to see that only three of his cohorts had survived, though they had been shot as well. Hot Shot Striker and Solar Eclipse were groaning, bleeding from many wounds. But as soon as Solar saw his brother collapse onto the ground, an arrow through his neck, and another in his spine, he roared with rage and distress. Just like Lunar, the others had been killed, feedback having been hit with the most arrows. Overcome with fury, Sonic Bullet suddenly heard laughing from somewhere above him. He looked around desperately to see who it was, and spotted a row of silhouettes lining the roofs of the buildings to his right. His blood ran cold as he counted them. There were seven. Run! He bellowed to the three remaining officers, and despite their injuries and Solar's distraught, all four of them sprinted in the opposite direction of the bakers, whose cackles could still be heard. As they passed a few guards who were trying to restore order, Sonic shouted at them, There are seven! There are seven bakers! This caused a bigger uproar, and the royal guards gave up on calming every pony. Evacuate the town! shouted a guard, who pulled out a walkie-talkie immediately afterwards. There are seven bakers! I repeat, there are seven bakers! Every single guard stationed in Ponyville heard the message, and they would rush to try to help every pony escape. However, any pony who tried to cross Ponyville's perimeter was pierced with a thick metal spike that shot up from the ground. How the hell? muttered a guard, bewildered by the booby trap. When and how had the baker set this up? It would have been impossible! He didn't get to wonder for long, as a gray pegasus dropped out from the air at lightning speed, coming down on the guard with a machete. He was still alive when the weapon sliced his jugular, twitching and gargling as he began to bleed out. That was a perfect shot. Minkie Pie said to Derby, 
getting off of the Pegasus's back and inspecting the dying stallion. I knew I could do it! I knew it I could! exclaimed Derpy happily. Minky's ear twitched, and she scrunched her nose. Just as an arrow sped towards her, she tackled Derpy to the ground, both of them just barely evading the retaliation. Minkie Pie looked behind her to see a very large stallion aiming another arrow at her, but she jumped back to her feet. Big mistake! She screamed, yanked Derpy's machete away from her with her teeth, and charged at the guard, taking him down before he could fire his second shot. Derpy assisted her friend by pounding at his skull with her hooves. Even as more soldiers began to surround them, the ponies were trapped in a war zone that once was their beloved town. For no pony was brave enough to cross the perimeter, the spikes started creating a sort of fence that was too tall for earth ponies or unicorns to jump over, and whenever a pegasus tried to fly over it, they were shot down from out of nowhere. No ponies knew where the archers were, but they seemed to be watching the citizens' every move. As the royal guards decided to tell ponies to get inside a building instead, there was an ear-shattering screech that drawn out for nearly 10 seconds straight. Every pony in the vicinity covered their ears, turned fearfully towards the sound, and saw a grayish-purple mare wearing armor bowed in an attack stance. A wicked smile stretched across her face. There's hell in hello, Blinky Pie snarled, and good in goodbye! Why? She charged at the crowd who dispersed, the guards holding their ground to fight Blinky Pie long enough for the citizens to get to safety. The Pie sister was alarmingly fast, but that wasn't really the problem. Her armor wasn't for defense, but to aid in her attack, consisting of nothing but blades that were strapped to her body. Knives with their edges facing outward circled her arms and legs. She had scales of razor blades constructed on her sides, being attached to sheets of malleable rubber. A partial face guard that lined the sides of her head, which was covered in long spikes, and a circular saw blade tied to the end of her tail. The royal guards split into two groups, one of which charged Blinky Pie head on, shields and spears held and ready, and the second stayed behind, bows and arrows and hoof to attack from afar. The weaponized mare collided with the frontmost stallion, ducking under the spears and laughing madly. Her knives clanged loudly as they made contact with his shield. Unfortunately for him, this just gave Blinky more leverage to follow her attack with a kick to the jaw, tearing through the flesh under his chin. When he fell to the ground, she danced on his heaving body, delivering multiple stab wounds on vital organs, slowly killing him. Arrows whizzed through the air, aiming at Blinky's exposed neck, but she turned slightly, deflecting them with the armor covering the sides of her body. Three guards came towards her at once, and she ducked, all three spears slamming against each other and halting their attack. A large explosion erupted from somewhere across town, which momentarily drew the guard's attention away from the fight, and the mare took her chance to strike. She jumped towards one stallion, kicking him in the head, penetrating his skull, bounded towards the second, slashing his eyes with the spikes on her face, and whipping around to sever the third's throat with a saw blade. Now two of them were dead, while the last one howled and covered his bleeding eyes. Shoot her! Shoot her! He screamed at his archers but his command was not obeyed. A yellow filly wearing a pink bow stood in the middle of three corpses, picking up one of the bows and aiming the arrow at the stallion's head. Appaloon took her time, biting her tongue as she steadied the weapon, and then released the arrow, which embedded itself into the stallion's forehead. He too dropped dead. Blanky, come on! I saw a large group of gods heading a couple of blocks away! She called to her friend, picking up a quiver and filling it with the arrows. All right, let's take them out quick, agreed Blinky Pie, grabbing a walkie-talkie from one of the bodies, and the two of them ran in the direction Apple Bloom had mentioned. The third explosion caused bodies to fall from the sky, launched as a result of Carousel Boutique blowing up where they had been hiding. There was almost 20 dead ponies lying on the rubble, killed by another nail bomb, just like Cherrywood had been. Five royal guards came galloping towards the scene, but froze when they saw the two living ponies smiling at them. There was a slate-colored mare with violet eyes, and she looked very smug at the moment, armed with two long metal chains. The second was the well-known pink party pony, but there was something different about her. She was the size of a filly, her skin was a bit wrinkly, and her entire body looked almost like fabric. That's the seventh baker! It's another foal! shouted a female guard, and all five stood their ground. The filly dressed as Pinkie Pie held a baseball bat wrapped in barbed wire, and her exposed green eyes creased at the corners. Even though her mouth was hidden, it was clear to Celestia's soldiers that she was smirking. Inky Pie took a few steps forward, strutting almost seductively. You there, 
Buck with the red mane, she barked at one of the stallions. He glared, but his body trembled, betraying his fear. Get on that walkie-talkie. Tell the rest of the gods to congregate at the park. That's where you'll find Pinkie Pie. We, we don't take demands from terrorists, said the stallion angrily, and the others agreed. You better do as she says, said the fake Pinkie in a Bronx accent. Pinkie's got another nail bomb that she'll set off in ten minutes. You don't know where, but it's gonna take a hell of a lot of lives if you don't cooperate. The guards all looked at each other fearfully. They weren't sure how many casualties there already had been, but they wanted to save as many remaining ponies as possible. The stallion pushed a button on the commanding device. All royal guards gather at the park, he said begrudgingly. I repeat, all guards to the park. What is that going to accomplish? spat the female guard. It'll give them a fighting chance, replied Inky Pie smoothly. All of your remaining soldiers against one earth pony. Maybe you can finally bring us to justice. Why do you keep saying they? We are going to bring you to justice, shouted another stallion. But Inky and the pinky imposter chuckled. <laughs> you five won't be joining the party, the filly chirped and she and Inky shot at them. The guards responded instantly, the unicorns attempting to apprehend the two with their magic, but Inky Pie whipped her chains at the horns, cracking them so their magic was unstable. The Pegasi were also unable to successfully avoid the attack, for as soon as they took flight, their wings were broken by the chain as well. The fake Pinkie Pie suffered only a mere cut on the shoulder, tearing through the costume's fabric, blood staining the pink crimson. She barely noticed as she bludgeoned three of the guards to death with her bat. Inky Pie wrapped one of the chains around the throat of a female guard, tightening it as hard as she could until she heard a crack. Neck now broken, the dead mare fell limp to the ground. One of the guards was left, the one with a red mane. The two bakers crept in on him as he tried to back away, forgetting all of his military training and being reduced to a frightened colt. Inky was the first to leap onto him, choking him out with her chain, and the Pinkie Pie broke his arms and legs with her bat, causing him to collapse. Then the filly sat down her weapon, grabbing the other end of the chain from Inky, and they both pulled in opposite directions. This crack was much louder because of the increased force, and the stallion moved no more. <sighs> All right, panted Inky Pie, wiping her brow and taking the stallion's walkie-talkie. I hope the others heard the order. Babs, how are you feeling? Babs had inspected the wound on her shoulder under the costume, but she just licked it clean and picked up her bat again. Thrill is the gift that keeps on giving, she told her friend contently. Good, let's go. Both of them turned and ran towards the park. All royal guards gather at the park. I repeat, all guards to the park. Buzzed a voice from one of the walkie-talkies laying in the grass. Minkie Pie approached it picking it up with her bloody hoof. She looked over at Derpy, who was happily munching on the liver of the dead guard. Derpy, it's time, said Minky, walking through many corpses, approaching the pegasus. Okie dokie, Loki, cheered Derpy, and she chucked the rest of the liver, bowing to allow the eldest pony to climb on her back. Then Derpy took flight, soaring above the town. All royal guards gather at the park. I repeat, all guards to the park. Blinky Pie grinned as she and Apple Bloom heard the command. Excellent, said Blinky. Time for a real party. Well, what you waiting for? cried Apple Bloom excitedly. Let's go! The two of them left behind the second group of guards they killed, cantering towards the meeting place. All the remaining soldiers in town convented in the park as ordered. There were only twelve left, which shocked them. Surely Celestia's expertly trained elite could handle a group of rogue ponies, right? It didn't seem so, especially when a few minutes went by and no other royal guards joined the dozen. What is all this? asked Flash Sentry. Looking around the park, all the trees and bushes were dying, just like the grass. But the entry place had been decorated with colorful streamers, balloons, confetti poppers, and a shiny banner that said things like, party, smiles, and celebrate. Don't let your guard down, said the captain. This could be a trap. And then they heard singing from somewhere in front of them, growing louder as they watched. Cause I like to make you smile, smile, smile. Yes, I do. It fills my heart when you scream all the while. Yes, it does. Cause I really need you to smile, smile, smile. 
For it'll be your last time. Pinkie Pie came into view, wheeling her party cannon in front of her. The guards stood completely still as she halted, facing them, smiling juviously and bouncing with excitement. Hello! <laughs> Pinkie Pie squeaked, waving at them. I'm so, so, so happy that you can make it, and you're right on time! What is all this? Flash Sentry asked loudly. And where are the other guards? Where's the one that told us to come here? Demanded a mare. Hmm, good question! Pinkie Pie said thoughtfully. May I use one of your walkie-talkies? They all looked at each other, and then Flash surrendered his own radio, setting it on the ground and gently kicking it towards the party pony. Pinky picked it up and pressed a button. Breaker, breaker, one nine! This is ding ling calling all henchmen! Air mare and tear jerker, do you copy? Loud and clear, replied the soft voice of Minkie Pie. We got clear shot of all the M20, and we're helping for leather. Over. Dixie Cup and Sunbeam, got your ears on? said Pinky. 10-4, answered Blinky Pie. Lights green, bring on the machine. We're highballing it, and we'll be there in short. Over. Bucket Mouth and Slave Driver, how am I hitting you? Coming in loud and proud, Dingling, came Inky Pie's voice. We've got one hoof on the floor, one hoof out the door, and she just won't do no more. Over. Roger Dodger, Pinkie Pie said happily. There's four rolling bears and twelve jackrabbits on this side. <laughs> What's your rabbit report? Over! Gone 10-7, over. Replied Blinky, who was the first to respond. Gone 10-7, over. Said Minky. Gone 10-7, over. Said Inky. 10-4! Keep your eyes and ears open and your black slacks smoking. Over and out! Pinkie Pie tossed the radio somewhere behind her, grinning at the confused guards. We'll be able to start shortly. Did any of that make sense to you? One guard asked Flash Sentry, but he shook his head, not tearing his eyes away from the pink mare. <laughs> it means all the other royal guards are dead! <laughs> the party pony laughed, and every pony gasped in fright and anger. Should we attack her? The female guard inquired. But before Flash could answer, Pinkie Pie held up a remote with a button on it. I wouldn't recommend it! She sung. I can push this button at any moment to detonate another bomb! That will make plenty of ponies go BOOM! <laughs> She laughed giddily, and then hopped onto the stand on top of her cannon. That is the building where the mare is currently hiding. Lots of ponies followed her there. Wouldn't want to take them all out in one shot, would we? Flash gritted his teeth, huffing in defeat. We have no choice but to play her game, he told the others. The fearful soldiers nodded, but grew even more disturbed when Pinky started singing again. Oh, when you're down and looking for some cheering up, then just head on down to Pinkie Pie's place. When you get inside, you'll find yourself a cheery land, such a happy and joy-filled and prickly merry land. As she continued, Flash Sentry and the other royal guards kept their stern eyes on her, waiting to see what she was going to do. Save for the party ponies singing, the park as well as the rest of Ponyville was dead silent. The smoke from the recent explosions covered the sky, the smell of gunpowder polluting the once sweet air. After a couple of minutes, Pinkie Pie was dancing around with a few noisemakers, and when she suddenly stopped, looking up, every pony else followed her gaze, and all thirteen of them watched the lone gray feather slowly waft downwards. When it gently hit the ground, Pinkie Pie giggled. That's the sign to get started! She cheered, and out of nowhere, Derpy hooves darted through the air at the soldiers, Minkie Pie held upside down in her arms. The dark mare cackled wildly as she managed to grab hold of three of the spheres from the group. Flash attempted to go after them, and the unicorns began to cast their magic. But then, four earth ponies came in every direction, each armed with bows and quivers of arrows. They were aiming their weapons, ready to shoot. The soldiers became distracted, and three more spears were snatched from above. Another pegasus shot into the air and tried to fight back, but he was pierced straight through the chest by one of Inky Pie's arrows. The guards cried out as their commander fell back onto the grass, bleeding from the wound. He panted for a few seconds before he completely stilled. Another three spears were stolen by Minky Pie, and then the last three as they came back around. Now the soldiers were armed with nothing but shields, useless wings, and meaningless magic. Derpy landed and Minky Pie got off her back. They each held one of the spears they had just taken, joining their friends in the circle keeping the guards in place. A brave unicorn charged at Apple Bloom, casting his magic to lift her into the air. Before he could do anything to her, he too was shot with an arrow straight through the side of his face. Apple Bloom grunted as she landed back onto the grass, looking over at Babs. 
She had been the one to stop the unicorn. Any pony else want to be stupid? She growled at the ten remaining guards. What are you planning on doing with us? Flash shot at Pinkie Pie, who was leaning against her cannon lazily. I just want to throw a party! She exclaimed, pulling a party favor from her puffy mane and blowing it. Then she stood up straight, stepping behind the blue cannon. What do you say, girls? Should we start the party? Party time! Derpy erupted, throwing her hooves into the air, and before the guards had a chance to react, Pinky lifted the fuse of the party cannon, and it shot with explosive confetti, loose streamers, and water balloons. The soldiers watched the decorations in confusion, but then started screaming when the balloons hit them, bursting on impact. The liquid inside sizzling as it burned the skin of their targets. But Flash had managed to jump out of the way to avoid most of the substance. Some had hit the back of his legs, and he winced, startled as it dissolved his fur and ate into his flesh, creating a hole the size of a bit. What the hell is this stuff? He wondered aloud, watching the others desperately try to wipe the solution off of themselves while in the process looking like screaming zombies. He also noticed some sort of cloud that hovered around them, and that the bakers had taken several steps back. Cover your mouths! He shouted at the suffering guards. But it was too late. For each breath that was taken, the gas created from the chemicals was inhaled, and almost immediately, the nine of them began to have violent muscle spasms, falling into the puddle of the solution that was smoking as it burned the grass. Tears came to flash Sentry's eyes but he hadn't noticed them. Looking on at friends he had been working with for many years, twitching in agony, their skin and muscle tissue melting away like candle wax. Then, the scream subsided, and the guards stopped moving. Derpy flapped her wings hard to disperse the gas away from them. All four pie sisters ran up to the confetti poppers, pulling their strings and making them burst with colorful streamers and paper. Flash just laid on the ground, watching the scene, feeling as though none of this was real. Oi! called Babs, going up to the Pegasus and waving a hoof in front of his face. Oi, dude, you there? Flash blinked away his tears and then stared into the filly's green eyes. What was that liquid? he asked, and surprised that his voice was so calm. Traffic acid, replied Inky Pie, as the sisters grouped around him. One of the strongest acids in existence. Yet, it still doesn't break through the latex of the balloons. Science is fascinating, no? Why did you attack Ponyville? He asked, turning his eyes on Pinkie Pie. I just wanted to show how much of a threat we really are! The pink Mary exclaimed with a hop. Flash Sentry's muscles went limp, and he laid his head onto the ground. He had lost all hope. In the time span of a single hour, all of his fellow soldiers had been killed. Nearly fifty of them, by four Earth Mares a mentally disabled pony, and two earth fillies, one of which he didn't even know the identity of. He would definitely lose if he tried to fight back, so he simply gave up. I surrender, he murmured. All the bakers laughed triumphantly, and Inky Pie gently tied her chains around his torso. Blinky Pie struck Flash Sentry's neck with a syringe, and in a matter of seconds, he fell unconscious. Day one was a complete success! Pinkie Pie shouted happily that evening, making a check mark on the whiteboard she had set up in her old room at Sugar Cube Corner. The baker sat around it, clapping, all except Derpy and Apple Bloom, who were on the roof, keeping watch for ponies attempting to escape the town. The window now open, so they were able to hear every word said. All the royal guards were taken out today! Babs, your plan worked perfectly! I knew it would, said Babs proudly, puffing out her chest as Minky dressed the cut on her shoulder. Like I said before, ten steps ahead. We still got those four cops, though, Blinky Pie reminded them. I'm not too worried about them, said Inky. They couldn't have gone far, so we'll track them down on day three, after we move on to the next step. Did you clean up that Flash Sentry's leg wound? Apple Bloom called from outside. We don't want him getting gangrene or nothing. I took care of it, Minky said as loudly as she could. I cleaned it? And put some bandages on it after we threw him in the dungeon at the castle. No pony killed Big Mac, did they? Babs asked her friends firmly. No! no. They all repeated at once. The filly nodded, smirking. Rockin'. I wanna see his face tomorrow. He thinks he can run and hide, but he'll be in for a surprise. Remember, you'll have new partners for the second day, Pinkie Pie said excitedly, pointing the next bullet on the whiteboard. Y'all did super duper great today! 
I expect more enthusiasm, dedication, and smiles! You can count on us, Pinky. Blinky Pie assured her younger sister. Derpy won't never give up! Yelled the Pegasus on the roof. All the bakers cheered, and their leader was filled with pride, dancing and laughing with them in celebration. The white boar was left alone, ignored now that the work was done. The first bullet said, Day 1, kill all royal guards, and had a large check beside it. The next bullet read, Day 2, capture survivors. The attack on Ponyville had only just begun.